So, sorry I haven't re uh, recorded in a little while that I have been painting. I've been painting this whole place. I'll show you once it's done. There's just a little spot on the floor I gotta do. One section, I gotta let this like kind of finish like curing like proper before I move things that are be gonna be sitting there for a long time. And you know, when I'm ready to move them again, it's gonna rip the paint up with it. So I, I gotta be a little careful. Even right now, it's probably fine to be sitting in this chair and all, but I don't know, man. I'm a little paranoid. I work so hard on it. My uh, my dad helped me on the first day. It's kind of like a three day affair, so it's a uh, a lot of hard fucking work. I also wound up in the ER for uh, my eye. I fucked up my eye. Got a got a angle grinder accident, a little, little chunk of the carborandum. Bounced off my cheek, bounced off my sunglasses. Should have been wearing safety glasses and went right into my eyeball. So that's a fun one. Fucking hurt, man. I tried to wash it out and everything, it didn't want to come out, so. The longer you wait, the worse it gets. Luckily I didn't, it wasn't actually a steal, it would have gotten a rough spot. It's a good way to lose an eye. Um, got a couple of ideas in the works. I, I just cut this U-lock off. I really want to pick it, but I don't quite know how to approach it yet. So, still working on that part. I haven't set up the pegboard yet, and I will record that once I do it. Um, either tonight, if I'm in the mood, or, or tomorrow night, I'm going to paint that little spot, and then I'll be ready to, to actually um, do the pegboard. Pull out the chop saw again. I'll, I'll record that. The audio is going to be so gnarly though because that chop saw is loud as fuck. So it's going to blow your guys' eardrums out. Hopefully this microphone's recording better. I did do like a couple checks, but here's a weird psychology one. Uh, I don't know if I'm speaking up because I know I have a microphone now and I like want to speak into it or if the microphone is actually making it louder. Or maybe I'm just being paranoid about it and just kind of keep on doing my thing. Um, I picked an Everest out in the field today, which isn't nothing to write home about, but it did give me the idea to pick an Everest on camera. So guess what we're doing today? We're picking an Everest on camera. I bet you didn't see that coming. Um, I had a couple Everest where, like this one is just like, I don't even know where this one came from. It just wound up in my collection, but I do have some that I've modified where I put spool pins in them because what it makes an Everest special is that they have a check pin in the bottom uh, of the keyway. And, you know, they're, they're, they claim to be high security, but anybody who walks up to it and sees it knows it knows the thing, anything about locks, I'll know that that's an Everest and I'll know how to get around it. Because all you gotta do is just lift that up. It's impossible to overset. You know when that thing's binding because the cork cocks over and, you know, sometimes you gotta hit that check pin and then and then hit more pins afterwards. But, you know, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. But I have some that I put spools into and that makes it evil because it'll cock the core over, then you hit the check pin and it cocks it more. And then you hit the spool pin and resets the check pin. You don't know if you got the spool all the way. And you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it really makes it a pain in the ass to pick them. Which is why I did that to them. But I don't really practice them super often. Another, another downside to Everest is they have a wide open keyway for the most part. Uh, they, have, they do have different keyways. They have like S123, C145. Um, and they have like override keyways and stuff. But for the most part, they're, they're pretty wide open keyway. My favorite is, is S123. I believe, don't quote me, but I believe the one that I'm going to be picking tonight is a C145. And let's swivel this camera around. Hopefully you guys can see better now. Let's see. I'm going to set, set you guys up right about there. I'm going to keep an eye on the camera. Make sure you guys can see everything okay. Oh, 
As you can tell, I got picks everywhere now I've been picking. Can you guys see okay? My hand is blocking. Let's give you a little more extension. I'll take you guys down a little more. There you go. And that is much better. So, let's see if we can't find any binders. I'm going to start the back. And number six is already binding. That's a click that feels like it's right on the shear line. There's no one out of five. Sometimes you get a like a perfectly sequential binding order. Man, that makes things nice. So you got good feedback in a sequential binding order. In this case, it's not because um, four, three, and two are not binding and skipping straight to one. Or, or sorry, four and three are not binding and skipping straight to two. And then one's not binding, so we are gonna have to jump around a little bit. And then there's four. That one felt good. Three still not binding, so let's take a peek at one. Maybe something dropped. If I had to guess, it's eight six. Let's see. There we go. Now three is binding. Take another peek at one. Super, super high. Probably like a two or a three. I'm gonna take a peek at this check pin. See that little channel around the bottom? That's where the check pin lives. It is binding and that's open. Just like that. Let's get this guy open so it's on the inside. Sorry, I didn't really have my tools super prepared. There we go. Let's see what's going on. Sometimes the, the way the tailpiece is shaped makes it so that that tool doesn't work. I always hate it when that happens. I do not have a key for this one. Most of my locks I don't actually even have keys for. I suppose I can go through and make keys for like everything, but I kind of like it like that. Doesn't even give me a chance to look as I pull the key out, you know? Now you really gotta be careful of that check pin, because that thing wants to shoot off on you. This might be master key. Let's start with six. It is not. It has been rekeyed though. Looks like we got two fives. It looks like a seven. A four. A six.
call that one a three, but the paint's worn off of it. Now this is where it gets special. Sorry, you guys can't see. You see that right there? You see that little check pin? So this guy is spring loaded. It has this little bitty spring that likes to shoot off on you. I see a lot of them out in the field where they just don't have that check pin because they shot off and the last guy didn't want to put another spring in there. I always keep a couple extra in my pin kit. If they don't have that check pin, they are less secure than your average leg. They always have standard stock and this is essentially a stock lock so I don't expect to see anything interesting. Don't get me wrong, Everest is a nice lock and they are really reliable from what I've seen. And they are harder to pick than the average lock. Especially to people um, who get intimidated by them. So that's the full complement of pins. What this check pin seats into right here is that hole in the bottom of the core. So you won't be able to turn the plug because this is physically sticking inside of it. Whoop. There you are. So this physically catches it and sticks inside and it's spring loaded so it shoots down. And it rests. If you look right down the keyway. It rests in that channel right there. So it sits in the bottom right there. And the way the key is shaped, unfortunately I don't have an Everest key on me but the Everest key has a track that slides into the groove and works its way back and it has a little hump in it so that it lifts this to the proper height. However, it's kind of useless in that respect because you physically can't overset this. This hole is blind. It doesn't go all the way through. So you can lift it up as high as you want. That's why just shoving a pick in it, it's just fine. And honestly, there wouldn't be too much advantage to be gained from having an overset condition on them because you just pick it and it's always the last to bind. So you just pick it and the thing pops open. Doesn't matter if there was an overset condition, it wouldn't matter because the second you hit it, the lock's open. You're not fishing around trying to find another binder, that's it. That is the be all and end all. So that's Everest. Not really too much to them. Nice and simple. Real easy. Honestly, a bit of a bit of a gimmick. They so I've heard them called high security before these are not high security if you're looking for high security don't buy these if you want a nice lock that's nicer than your average leg and you want to spend a little bit more on key links then by all means get an Everest I think that's going to do it for us keep it nice and short for you guys let's see man this thing's difficult to control I'll get better at it I promise yeah, and actually, this is the bike lock I'm talking about. I cut off a bike lock. That's one of the projects I was talking about. I got to figure out how to tension that inside of there. And it's not your average pin tumbler. This is a slider sidebar. So I really got to figure out how to do this. It's like a whole different landing curve to it. And I don't understand it. I've kind of prodded around and checked it out, but can't really get anything going on it. I might need to go. Whenever I get stuck on something like that, I always buy more tools. And it's like, a, you know, I'll fish through the internet, finding different tools that that I think might work, or sometimes I just take a feeler gauge or some windshield wiper inserts and I'll make my own. And if I can't find it, I always kind of like to buy because it's time consuming to make and it's never gonna be quite as good as something that was made, like machine made. You know, these picks are all laser cut and they're all perfect. And if it breaks, I buy another one and it's exactly the same as the one it was before. So you get that level of consistency. Like, nothing wrong with homemade picks. I got some homemade stuff, but yeah, it's um, 
you can't you can't replace the 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 quality of a machine made and they can use different alloys that I can't use like stainless steel and all that shit so it makes it harder for me so I just buy them anyways I think that'll do it I'll uh see you when I see you I guess yeah